Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about 8 cards that have gone up, up, and up. So these cards have something in common. They have shown steady growth and have been played a lot in ED8s. So Maelstrom Nexus, a very beautiful card in person and a fantastic foil. I do have lots of copies of this. I'm not sure how I acquired so many, but very, very good. It gives the first spell you play each turn Cascade, which is great for the random players, and it's five colors. In the beginning, it was about, looks like $2.50 from this graph, and then it has slowly and steadily climbed. It has never really declined at all. It just had a nice path of growth. I'm not, again, I don't know why I have so many of these. I'm not entirely sure what I was doing. Maybe I was making like a Cascade deck and I needed four of them. But then I was making two Cascade decks, so I needed eight. But anyway, beautiful card in person, uh, incredibly beautiful foil. And what's interesting about this is the foil price is a lot more expensive, which you don't see as much for the Alara. Next, Omnath, Locus of Mana. I believe there's a reprint foil of this from the Vault, but it's a very ugly foil. I do own it. And it is $12 now. In the past, it was also under $5. A lot of these cards we are going to look at has steadily and steadily increased in price. Now it is $12 again. Keep in mind, I'm almost certain it's from the Vault reprint because I remember the foiling being incredibly terrible that I had to take it out of my deck. And I don't think the natural foil was that bad. It's good. Anytime you can add more mana, is it's not bad. Uh, it's not something that I... Anytime you can affect the mana or accelerate, you want to play the card. So overall, very cool card, very good mythic. Cards from that, uh, original Zendikar have been trending up in time. This is the type of graph I love because at no point did you really lose money if you got in, right? You just saw a steady, steady increase. Now, another card I love to death, Demonic Tutor. It has a similar graph, but you have to pay at a higher price point, which it looks like it's around $10 you had to buy in that, and now it's around $24. So definitely a lot of growth, and it, it, this is the cheapest version of it, the revised version, Unlimited and obviously Alpha Beta are more expensive. I believe this is more expensive than the Demonic Liliana, but at one time, Demonic Liliana was $20, and this was like 8 or something. But Demonic Liliana, Demonic Tutor uh, with the Liliana artwork has been reprinted in an anthology set which also has Ancestral Visions. So lots of value in that particular set. It's one of those things that you look at and you say, hmm, I don't think they're going to reprint this. Or even if they reprint it, it will be with different artwork or it'll be unique. And even if they reprint it, like what? Or what's the danger of this card going down in price? It is literally one of the best cards ever printed. You go ahead and grab anything you want. So... Certainty, right? A lot of times, if you don't want to make a risky Sahili Raw call, you can bank on certainty. Now, this one is a loopy loop, and it is Grave Titan. Why I like Grave Titan now is because zombies are in trend, and as long as zombies are popular, this card will always be pricey, and that's why you see the growth. Uh, the growth has been largely due recently from about 5 bucks to about 9 due to the fact that there's more zombies. Now, I do kind of wish that this card itself was a zombie, but the fact that it can create you know, a few zombies uh, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get 2-2 two, 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 two zombies. That's very good. That's always been great. This has always been a stellar card. I don't see why it would not be good in ED8s. The Titans in general, um, M11 is an interesting set because I see boxes for incredibly cheap prices and it's something that I have looked at and studied. The, the problem with opening boxes is even if you can get a good price on them, there is variance. And unless you open enough to offset the variance, you, you can lose a lot of money opening boxes. It's like gambling.
It's exactly like gambling. All right, let's talk about this card. Staff of Domination. It does have an infinite combo, and I love its infinite combo with elves. Um, I always ran it with Priest of Titania, and if you could get five elves, including the Priest of Titania, um, yeah, it's untapped target creature. Actually, four elves. No, five. You need five because you need to generate the extra green. So then you would have the priest. You would tap it for five. Then you would pay free, untap the priest, and then untap the staff, and then go infinite. That is one of my favorite combos when I was playing as a kid. This card is a beautiful foil card. I don't know what it is about the blue. And... Yeah, I remember back in the day, like, foils were not really highly desired. Uh, in fact, after a cheating scandal, most people actually didn't want foils, because unless you foiled out your whole deck, people would sometimes accuse you of cheating if your one card, especially in combo piece like this, was in foil. And this continued, I feel like cheating has always been involved in Magic, but it was, like, more known back in the day. Like, it's kind of funny because there wasn't really, like, cameras on players at that time. And you have Mike Long, who was a known cheater, and Mark Justice, who I believe is Mike Long and Mark Justice. Wizard of the Coast loved those two, and they were known and renowned and very good at cheating. Now, Patriarch's bidding, $14. When I looked at this card, so the story, most of these cards today we're going to look at is $5, and then they become more than $5. Old cards are just good cards. Bulk cards are just good cards. This is the definition of bulk back in the day. But now, tribal being stronger and stronger and stronger, this is not bulk anymore. So that's why I love these old bulk cards because you never know. And it's always a nice gamble. And if you have a large enough collection, I guarantee you, and you play during Onslaught, I guarantee you have this card because no one wanted to trade for it until recently. Now, my best advice for you, if you have old cards, do not trade them away. Absolutely do not trade them. Do not make a deal. Just don't do any of that stuff because you never know. Like This, this card doesn't strike me as a $14 card, right? A for Vio. Wow, this card needs a reprinting again. Uh, $44. $44 is utterly too much for an uncommon in modern. It's a very good card in Modern, very good card in Legacy, but $44 for this card kind of makes me want to puke. Uh, it really does make me want to puke because there are some cards that sh just shouldn't be expensive. And my gut feeling is Uncommon should never be above $10. That's just my understanding, right? And it's because it's Uncommon. Now, obviously, they reprinted this, I feel like, as a rare in one of the Modern Masters, probably Modern Masters 1, and they printed it as a mythic and from the vault, I believe, exiled. Is that correct? I don't know. I, I know it's been reprinted at least once, and it has little to no effect on its price. So you need to reprint this as an uncommon. If that doesn't tank the price, I don't know what will tank the price. And that is something that I think Wizard of the Coast should look at. Make it a Chase Uncommon from a set. All right, talking about Chase cards. Let's end it with this one. Chalice of the Void, almost 80 bucks. Wow. This is the Modern Masters version. And as you can see, it wasn't always 80 bucks. It was kind of like 5 bucks, and it became 80 bucks. It is... Very, very good in the internal format. Um, and it's just that good. And there's not that many copies of it. And it is a four of. And against some decks, it's an instant win. If you play this against certain decks, you will win the game. Regardless of what you or your opponent do from that point on. Because you just lock them out. Now, this is the least fun card to play in ED8s, especially if you're like a blue control player and someone plays this on you at one, you're just like, oh, okay, all my cantrips are pretty much useless now. I'm not entirely sure how they're going to reprint this card, but I definitely feel like they should, and it should not be a mythic. It has been reprinted in Modern Masters, but a lot of those Modern Master cards need another reprinting, right? 
Anyway, that is it. Let me know if I missed any cards you want me to talk about in the comment section below. Bye, guys.